If you've been looking to join the ranks of Altoid users, you may have been given some pretty bad advice on how to determine the performance difference between your 1080p monitor and a 1440p Altoid, like this gem here. Just take the difference in resolution, calculate that out, and that's the difference in performance you're going to need. But is that true at all? No, not at all. It is completely wrong. Performance almost never scales linearly with resolution. There's a lot more that goes into the performance you get in the sheer shader throughput of your GPU. There's VRAM speeds, and CPU bottlenecks, and game engine bottlenecks, and driver bottlenecks, among a myriad of other things that determine the final performance you're going to get in a game. If you took the resolution advice at face value, you would think you would need a GPU with 2.4 times the performance of your current GPU, or in other terms, 138% additional performance. That would have you purchasing a GPU well above what you really need, which in today's market could cost you hundreds of dollars. I have tested 1080p versus Altoid performance in 14 games across 7 GPUs, so you can see the true performance difference going Altoid takes. I have set all these games to their max settings, using ray tracing where available, and not using DLSS or FSR to make sure we're not hitting any CPU bottlenecks. So, your real performance will likely be a lot higher than what you're seeing here. Before we get into the game performance, I will flash the specs in my test system on screen now, so pause the video if you want to take that all in. Now, let's see what the real performance difference is. Starting off, we look at Fortnite with epic settings, 100% resolution scale with Nanite Lumen and hardware RT on. Here is the standard 1080p performance, and now here we see the actual Altwide performance, and this is what you'd expect the performance would be if you just used the calculations. That assumes an Altwide monitor would need 138% more GPU performance to achieve the same frame rate as on a 1080p monitor. When we measure the actual additional performance needed to match 1080p, as you can see the calculations are quite off, with the 4090 seeing less than half the expected performance drop, and the other 6 cards see a fair bit less than 75% of the calculated performance drop. As you can see here, if you're coming from a 2080 or a 36 or 3070 class card, the 4070 will more than make up for any performance penalty for going altwide. If you're already on a 40 series card, you will see a hit to performance, but nowhere near the calculated amount. Next up is Starfield on ultra settings with no upscaling. First we have the 1080p performance, and this is the actual performance when going ultra wide, and this is the calculated drop, and this is the actual measured performance difference. With its significant performance improvement since launch, we see all cards performing well, and all are seeing less than half the calculated performance drop from going altwide, with the 4090, 4080, and 7900 XTX all CPU bound at 1080p resolution, with the 4090 barely being any faster at 1080p than at altwide resolutions. Upgrading from a 2080 class GPU will see huge improvements in performance that more than make up for any resolution difference. Next is Cyberpunk using its Ultra RT preset with upscaling turned off despite being on by default. First we have the 1080p performance and this is the actual performance when going altwide and this is the expected calculated drop and this is the actual measured performance difference. This is the game that comes closest to being 1 to 1 scaling with resolution. The high levels of ray tracing in this game mean that in all cases except one, the GPU's RT cores are the limiting factor, and they are heavily influenced by resolution. All GPUs but the 2080 are near but not quite at the calculated result. The 2080 sees its VRAM become the limiting factor when stepping up to the 3440 by 1440p altwide resolution. So, a 12GB card becomes a minimum when stepping up to altwide, if you want to be able to ray trace on ultra settings. Any of the 40 or 7000 series cards shown here are able to best the 2080's 1080p performance at altwide 1440p. Next up is Star Wars Jedi Survivor, played on its epic preset with RT on and upscaling off. First we have the 1080p performance, and this is the actual performance of going altwide, and this is the calculated drop, and this is the actual measured performance difference. Here we see the 4090 and the 4080 are both hitting CPU limits at 1080p, and the relative drops going altwide are modest, while the rest of the cards fall into a more normal scaling range, still much better than the calculated results. Upgrading from a 2080 class card, only the 4070 can't best its 1080p performance at altwide resolutions. Next up is F1 2023, played on ultra high preset that includes ray tracing with upscaling turned off. First we have the 1080p performance, and this is the actual performance when going altwide, and this is the calculated drop, and this is the actual measured performance difference. 
The 4090 is running into the limits of the driver efficiency for NVIDIA cards as it scales out of line with the rest of the NVIDIA stack. While the two AMD cards see a bigger drop in performance, this mostly seems to be due to the AMD driver having less overhead than the NVIDIA one at lower resolutions. As the 700 XTX beats the 4090 at 1080p while still beating the 4080 at 3440 by 1440p, any upgrade from the 2080 class card to one of the new GPUs will provide a better than 1080p experience for ultrawide. Next up is Diablo 4, played on its ultra preset with no upscaling. First we have the 1080p performance, and this is the actual performance when going ultrawide, and this is the calculated drop, and this is the actual measured performance difference. When we measure the additional performance necessary to match 1080p, we see the 4090, 4080, and 7900 XTX are hitting a CPU limit at 1080p, and see moderate additional performance compared to some of the slower cards. If you were upgrading from a 2080 class card, you would need to stay in the $800 price bracket to maintain the same performance at 3440 by 1440p as you see at 1080p. Next up is Liza P played on its ultra settings with no upscaling. First we have the 1080p performance, and this is the actual performance when going ultrawide. This is the calculated drop, and this is the actual measured performance difference. Here we see the 4090, 4080, and 700 XTX and XT all hitting a CPU wall with the 4070 Ti not far behind. The GPU bound cards still perform well at the ultrawide resolution. Here any of the other cards tested is able to provide a better experience than the 2080 at 1080p when playing at an ultrawide resolution. Next up is Forspoken played on its ultra high preset with upscaling turned off. First we have the 1080p performance and this is the actual performance when going ultrawide. This is the calculated drop and this is the actual measured performance difference. All of our modern cards are getting a respectable performance boost over our calculated results with the old 2080 suffering from lack of VRAM at higher resolution and C scaling worse than the calculated results. Here we see a 2080 owner would need to upgrade into the same price tier to maintain 1080p type performance at ultrawide resolutions. Next up is Payday 3 played on its ultra preset with no upscaling. First we have the 1080p performance and this is the actual performance in going ultrawide. This is the calculated drop and this is the actual measured performance difference. The 4090 is starting to hit a CPU bottleneck at 1080p while the rest of the NVIDIA stack is seeing performance scaling pretty close to the calculated results. The two AMD cards are completely bottlenecked by their driver. This is another game where the 2080 class card owner will need to spend in the same price bracket to keep its performance when moving to ultrawide 1440p. Next up is Control played on its high preset with high ray tracing fully turned on. First we have the 1080p performance and this is the actual performance when going ultrawide. This is the calculated drop and this is the actual measured performance difference. Here we see both the 4090 and the 700 XTX and XT hit their respective driver CPU limits, losing minimal performance going from 1080p to ultrawide. All the other cards are scaling in the normal range, besting the calculated results by a fair bit. If you come from a 2080 class card, you will need to spend the same price bracket to maintain equivalent or better performance to the 1080p results when playing on an ultrawide 1440p monitor. Next up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider played on its highest preset with Ultra RT on. First we have the 1080p performance, and this is the actual performance when going ultrawide. This is the calculated drop, and this is the actual measured performance difference. Again, we see the 4090 finds the limits of the CPU. All the other cards get pretty good scaling, with the 4080 and 7900 XTX seeing some slight CPU limitations on the top end of their frame rate. Any of the cards here will be a huge performance boost over the 2080 class card, even at the ultrawide resolution. Next up is Borderlands 3 played on its badass preset. First we have the 1080p performance and this is the actual performance in going ultrawide. This is the calculated drop and this is the actual measured performance difference. We see all the GPUs performing in the expected scaling range, with the faster GPUs seeing less scaling than the weaker ones, just as you would expect from dropping the resolution. Upgrading from a 2080 class GPU at 1080p, you would need a 4070 Ti or 700 XTX to best its performance at ultrawide 1440p. Next up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, played on its ultra high preset. First we have the 1080p performance, and this is the actual performance in going ultrawide. This is the calculated drop, and this is the actual measured performance difference. Again, the 4090 is starting to be driver bottlenecked at the lower resolution, while all the other cards see pretty standard scaling, with any modern GPU able to match the 2080's 1080p performance at ultrawide 1440p. 
Last, we have Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy played on its Ultra preset with Ultra RT turned on and no upscaling. First, we have the 1080p performance, and this is the actual performance when going alt wide. This is the calculated drop, and this is the actual measured performance difference. We see the CPU limit the 4090s frame rate at 1080p, and going down the Nvidia stack, we see more and more scaling, though never as much as the pixel difference would imply. The two AMD cards follow a similar trend to the Nvidia ones. Here we see the 4070 can match the 1080p performance of the 2080, or you could soundly beat it at one price point higher. Now let's look at the averages for each card to see what you can expect overall from going from a 1080p gaming experience to an altwide 1440p gaming experience. First we have the 1080p performance, and this is the actual performance when going altwide. This is the expected performance if you are just calculating the pixel difference, and this is the actual measured performance difference. Here you couldn't ask for a more expected graph, with the faster cards seeing the smallest performance difference from going up in resolution, and the slower cards seeing the biggest performance difference. And the 4090 is getting well less than half of the expected drop, and is unsurprisingly wasted at 1080p resolution. The 4080 and 7900 XTX are in a dead heat, seeing significantly less performance drop than the pixel difference suggests while the 4070 Ti and 7900 XTX have a raw performance difference, they are seeing the same performance delta between resolutions and are performing well above the pixel difference expectations. Even the 4070 and 2080 are performing above what calculations would suggest, even though they never come near having CPU limited performance. Based off the average performance on display here, we see that any of the tested modern GPUs can outperform a 2080 class card running a 1080p monitor when playing at alt-wide 1440p. As you can see, the average performance drop is well under what you would expect just going by the number of pixels you're adding. Even the worst performing GPU is seeing well over 25% more performance than what you would expect. The only case where you have real concern when going from 1080p to 3440 by 1440p alt-wide is 8GB of VRAM is just not enough for native rendering at these resolutions in some of the more intense games. Now, DLSS and FSR can help alleviate this by lowering the internal render resolution, therefore lowering the VRAM uses. But there's some games where no matter what, eight gigabytes of VRAM just isn't gonna be enough. The good news here is that if you want equivalent performance at 3440 by 1440p, and you're coming from a 1080 Ti, 2080, or a 3060 Ti class GPU, the RTX 4070 is gonna be enough to match that performance and then give you a little bit more. And if you're willing to move higher up the stack, you can see over double the performance of your 1080p results. And that's not even talking about using DLSS or FSR, which sees much greater benefits at the ultra-wide resolution than it does at 1080p. Thank you for watching. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Maybe you're looking between a 1440p monitor and an ultra-wide 1440p. If so, you can check out this video here where I compare their performance. Or you might be interested in this video here, where I explain why an Altwide is the ultimate gaming monitor. If you want to help the channel out, I have affiliate links in the description below for all the GPUs shown in this video. If you use one of those to purchase your next GPU, it would be a huge benefit to the channel. Also, you can sign up for my Patreon to help keep this going. I'm Scott, and I'll see you next time, Altwide fans.